Hi, welcome to the Insight Global webinar about empathy and accountability. My name is Matt Gonzalez. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, we're going to be talking about so many things that have to do with empathy and accountability, and really in terms of how you can use that to better manage and be part of your teams. So the agenda today is a couple things. First, before you can be a great leader, before you can make sure you're using empathy and accountability to lead, you have to make sure you know who are you? Who am I in this case? Uh, you have to know who you are before you can lead others. What does your identity mean to your people? How do we connect who you are and who they are to make sure we're working towards shared goals? Accountability, what is it? What does it mean? How are we applying it? And finally, how to create a culture of accountability. So let's start at the beginning. How do we know who we are? Well, we need to ask ourselves a lot of questions. These are some of the questions that I like to start with. What motivates me? That answer is gonna be so different for so many people. Uh, it could be money, it could be praise, uh, it could be advancement, it could be growth. Um, the answers, there's tens of hundreds of different answers for people, but we need to know what motivates ourselves uh, and what motivates the people that work for us. Personally, my motivation comes very much from taking care of my family, being a great example for them, um, but also in growth. I love having a growth mindset. Uh, I get excited when I get to learn new things and add those to my repertoire of the skills that I currently have. What makes me feel appreciated? Um, we've all heard about the five love languages. They also have a version of that book for the five lo love languages at work, but everyone accepts praise in different ways. Um, some people really, really enjoy acts of service. Some people like to be uh, recognized uh, in front of their peers, right? Some people want that one-on-one -on -one recognition. Uh, some people uh, feel appreciated by time spent. Uh, some feel appreciated by gifts given. Uh, I know personally, I am a gift giver when I want to show appreciation. And that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to give someone a big fancy gift with a bow tied on top. It could be a note that I wrote to them. Could be an article I saw that really made me think of them that I thought they would appreciate. Uh, could be a book that I came across and read that I also thought they would like. Now, that's how I show appreciation, but the way I receive appreciation is different. I am very much a words of encouragement person. And so it, again, the more I know about that of myself, the easier it is for me to then communicate that with my peers, with my leaders, with people that, that work for me. But then it helps me also understand what are the different ways that they are going to feel appreciated and how do I lean into those? I can't treat every team member the exact same as the next one. How do I give praise? I just mentioned that. I like to give gifts, right? But I do have to take into account, is that how my teammate, is that how my employee, is that how my peer is going to receive that? Um, and again, that's where we're going through this whole process of understanding ourselves and the people on our teams, right? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What is my why, right? I need to really spend time, you need to really spend time to understand what all of those things are, what the answers to those questions are, so that then you can be the leader and the manager that you wanna be. Now there's a lot of resources that can help you out with that. You don't have to just sit in a room and figure it out by yourself. It is a good place to start to try to answer those questions alone. But I'm a big fan of uh, Enneagrams. Uh, we have an example of one right here. I am uh, a two for the most part, a nurturing, a supporter. I wanna make sure everyone's super well taken care of. Uh, what I love about the Enneagram is it'll tell you the pros and cons of each different kind of personality. And again, having that self-knowledge will allow me to interact with people um, in a more meaningful way. 
Uh, we mentioned it a little bit earlier, but the love languages or the languages of appreciation, great place to go look. This has it through a workplace lens. Uh, and then the Clifton Strengths Finder. This is just a really great personality test that gives you clarity into what are your strengths as a professional? What are your weaknesses? Um, and it's funny, so many times we focus so much on how to get better on our weaknesses. And we should do that, but um, I subscribe to the notion that you should put more effort into making your strengths even stronger than you are putting into improving your weaknesses. You gotta work on both. We wanna grow in both areas. Um, but put more of that work into where you're building your strengths than you are in improving your weaknesses. So once we've owned our own development, once we've owned who we are, what's the next step? Well, we need to figure out what is accountability, okay? And what is empathy? So let's start with empathy. My good close personal friend, Oprah Winfrey said, leadership is about empathy. It is about having the ability to relate to and connect with people for the purpose of inspiring and empowering their lives, okay? So empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. Here's some examples of empathy and non-empathy. A big thing that people get confused with, I find, is empathy and sympathy. Um, different uh, emotions, different feelings, um, and so here's really what empathy is, right? The ability to identify and understand another person's situation and feelings. Uh, if you don't have the ability to have empathy, some non-empathy is not understanding another situation and feelings, not putting yourself in their shoes. Can be a really hard exercise, but boy, if you can get yourself there, you will really understand where that person's coming from. And it puts you in a great position as a leader to help them out help them grow, get to where they need to be, get to be where they want to be. Being on time for appointments, that's empathy. That's showing care for other people's time, uh, other people's efforts. Um, always being late is a non-empathetic person. Uh, empathy, willing to admit when you are wrong, right? Uh, someone that's empathetic, understands emotionally, we're not always gonna be right. Um, people love working with leaders that are able to admit their faults. Uh, I want to be on a team with someone that's able to admit their faults. Um, I think we've all worked with those people that are non-empathetic and refuse to apologize, refuse to take responsibility. And how much harder is it to work for or with that person? Uh, someone that's very empathetic has the ability to ask others about themselves. Uh, Non-empathetic is someone that is always thinking about themselves, always talking about themselves. Uh, and a really important part of empathy is being able to connect with people. To connect with people, you need to be able to communicate with people and understand who they are, what they want, and how they're trying to get there. And then empathy is recognizing each individual is different. Uh, Non-empathy is generalizing about a group of people. This is really hard for leaders and managers, especially new leaders and managers. We feel we have to set a standard, which you do, but the way you get each teammate to reach that standard, the way you get the best out of each person is going to be a little different based off of all the things that we just talked about. What is their why? What is their motivation? How do they accept praise? Um, doesn't mean you hold them to different standards, but the way you hold them to the, those standards is going to really be different. And that's where empathy comes, becomes such a huge asset uh, to anyone that is working on a team. Now, from here, let's talk about accountability and let's start marrying these two ideas. Uh, the great Pat Summit, former University of Tennessee women's basketball coach, said responsibility equals accountability equals ownership. And a sense of ownership is the most powerful weapon a team or organization can have. How many times have you been on a team and have been handed goals, been handed directive, uh, been handed responsibility, but not taken ownership over it? That's what Pat's talking about here. It is really hard to hold people accountable to something if they do not own it as their responsibility. If they do not take that objective for the team, if they do not take that objective for the company and say, you know what, 
here's where my responsibility in that lies and I own it. It's my responsibility and I'm gonna do everything I can to take care of it. That's where accountability really comes into play. Now, getting that responsibility to be owned, that's where empathy really comes in. That's where really understanding who your teammates are, who your peers are, who your leaders are, is so, 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 so important so that you can get that culture of ownership, that culture of accountability. So accountability, why you need it and how to get it, right? We all know what we need to do as a team or an organization, or we know what goals we're trying to reach. But accountability is the way that we will reach them. To be accountable means to be responsible or answerable to someone for something, even yourself. It involves taking responsibility for your own actions and being able to explain them. Ac accountability eliminates the time and effort you spend on distracting activities and other unproductive, unproductive behavior. When you make people accountable for their actions, you're effectively teaching them the value of their work. Let me say that one more time. When you make people accountable for their actions, you're effectively teaching them the value of their work. When this is done right, accountability can increase your team members' skills and confidence. You are telling your team when you hold them accountable to something that they have taken ownership with. I value your work, I value what you're doing, and it matters. The opposite of this is that if you put goals, uh, responsibilities out there and then do not hold your team or individuals accountable for it, you are saying, hey, you know what? This was important for me enough to say once, or maybe I'll revisit it in three months, but I don't value the effort, care, and work you put into this. That's why I'm not holding you accountable to it on a regular basis. One of my favorite thoughts about accountability is that accountability really equals care. I've seen so often uh, in the professional world that people sometimes feel accountability uh, is uh, micromanagement or accountability is a lack of trust. Uh, I couldn't disagree with those notions more. Uh, I have so many examples from my 20 year career of where people were holding me very accountable to things that I said I wanted to do. Um, and maybe in that moment, I didn't want to hear that feedback. But I realized that the only reason those people had those direct conversations with me to hold me accountable was because they cared about me and wanted to see me be successful and grow. Um, the easy way out is to not address someone's shortcomings with them, to not hold them accountable to things they said they want to do. And ultimately, uh, what's gonna happen is that person will eventually leave the organization because they do not feel valued. They are possibly not seeing the success they want um, because their leader or their peer did not care enough to hold them accountable. So caring, guys, is showing concern or interest into something of importance. So in this instance, caring is we have agreed that this thing on our team is your responsibility. And so you have taken ownership of it. So I'm going to care about it because it's important to both of us. Someone's own care and own career should be of the utmost importance to them. So this is a really important one for the leaders out there and for the teammates. If you're on someone's team and you are not constantly, constantly sharing with them the care and work you're putting into something that you've said you owned, then you're not showing that you're owning your own career, right? To show care for, the, for your own career, a person should be consistently, proactively communi communicating uh, their actions and taking responsibility for what they are doing to grow their own career. Let me say that one more time to show care for their own career, a person should consistently be proactively communicating their actions and taking responsibility for what they're doing to grow their own career. In a way, by proactively communicating, by owning your career, by owning your responsibilities, 
It's a form of self accountability. You are making it so easy for you and your leader to hold yourself accountable for the things that you said you wanted to do that is gonna to contribute to the overall success of your team. When you are having to be followed up on, when someone else is having to hunt you down to find out what is going on with the responsibility that you said you were taking ownership of, it shows them that you do not care and you are not taking full ownership of it. And so once we have that accountability, once we have that agreed upon contract, if you will, of this is what you're gonna own, um, you believe it, I believe it, uh, how do we build the rest of it? Well, the steps of accountability are fairly simple. One, we wanna build those goals together. So just like we mentioned, I cannot hand you a goal. Now I can sit down and say, okay, we both want you to get to X, Y, Z. I have some ideas about how you can get there, but how do you think you can get there? And then you guys can put those goals together uh, and make sure that there's a shared plan and a real sense of ownership on the other person's part. Next, let teammates know that it is their responsibility to communicate how they are doing on these goals. Again, no one likes having to follow up with someone to ask how they're doing. The thing I like doing least in my home is asking my son over and over again if he cleaned his room. We are really working on that ownership piece. But once he learns to get there that he comes to me and tells me when he did it, then I am making improvements and having a growth mindset. But I'll tell you this, on the few occasions when he has come to tell me without me having to ask that he has cleaned his room, it shows how much he cares and I have to make sure in those instances that I am showing him that I value his work, that I appreciate what he did, and really reinforce those great behaviors. Uh, three, the more proactive an update is on success and failures, the more it shows how much someone cares. And this is sometimes where people mess up proactive communication. They think all the updates have to be great. They don't, because guess what? To get somewhere, to grow, to achieve success, you're gonna to have to fail just as much as you succeed. And as a leader, I wanna hear what you're failing at and what you're learning from it and how you're pivoting and doing things differently. If I can hear those things, it shows me again, how much you care and how much you're taking ownership over your own situation. Uh, and finally, if your leader comes to you, it shows lack of care. So always get to them before they get to you. And that doesn't just apply to leaders. That can apply to anyone. I feel that way as a leader myself. If someone that works for me comes and asks for an update on something, I have failed at communicating with them. I am breaking down the trust between us. Um, and that can, can uh, apply to anyone within an organization or in your personal life. So in closing, here are the things you need to do to make sure that you are an empathetic, caring, and accountable leader. One, do the work to know who you are. Number two, do the work to figure out who your teammates are. Number three, understand what is going on with your people in good times and in bad. Number four, use empathy to inspire and empower them. Number five, empower them through accountability put that onus of care and ownership on their shoulders. Number six, show, make sure that they show how much they are accountable by holding themselves accountable and sharing proactive updates. And finally, accountability plus empathy equals an inspired, caring, motivated, and confident team. My name is Matt Gonzalez. Thank you so much for joining us for this Insight Global webinar.